I seem to remember doing this maybe five or six months ago, and and I was sort of struggling to come up with an answer to the question, what could go right? Because there, w not because there was nothing that could go right, but just because everything kind of already was okay. And here we are, September, mid-September, and it feels like the exact opposite. I, you can't find anybody who can even come up with uh, a long shot reason to be optimistic. The, the conversations are, are dire and uh, people are, are speaking in, in certainty that things are going to get, they're bad now for sure, and they're only going to get worse. It's just a matter of how bad will it be, how long will it last, and people are not looking to, uh, to invest, uh, they're, they're not looking to invest new capital, they're, they're nervous. And, and, they're, and they're looking for reasons to sort of validate their concerns. That's what it feels like to me. They're, they're, um, they're just, they're looking to, uh, to be proven correct that things are bad and that they're going to get worse. So, I, I, and I, it's interesting that you mentioned that we're, we're actually not back to June lows. So the stock market was lower in the middle of June than it is today. And and the 10-year treasury was higher than it is today. And I think if, if most people didn't, if you didn't give most people the opportunity to take a look at, at the short-term history or, or a couple charts, they would, they would get that wrong. It feels worse today. And I'm not sure, I think it's just people are exhausted. It's been, you know, now four or five steady months of, people describe it as like a, a crash. The stock market is crashing or we're, we've been in a correction, we've been in a bear market. Things haven't really changed all that much. It feels bad because your, your account values have never really recovered. We, we've, we lost money, both stocks and bonds, into the first three or four months of the year and we've kind of bounced around at those levels. So it, it feels bad to not get a recovery and it's, it's, it's exacerbated by the fact that over the last 10 years, every recovery from a sharp sell-off was quickly met with a recovery. And this feels different. And so um, that's why we're hearing all the talk of, of recession and uh, the fact that it's just going to get worse. It's just be, people feel bad. This feels bad. And uh, I, I, th I think I, I do feel somewhat strongly that the worst is behind us. I do think that we, we bottomed in, in stocks in mid-June and we topped in terms of yields in mid-June, which means bonds fell also. So bonds and stocks fell at the same time and they sort of regained their footing around the same time. And I think what's happening now, we're just sort of revisiting some of those levels for stocks and for yields. And, um, and it just feels worse the second time around. You know, the technicians call it a retest. And I'm not gonna go into the, the uh, philosophy of, of why that works and why that's a term, but uh, historically that is the case. That when stocks fall sharply, it, it's rare for them to just recover straight away and that we do tend to revisit those levels. Sort of gives uh, sellers the opportunity to, uh, that didn't sell the first time around to sell now. Nobody has, I don't think, the the precise answer. Are, are we are we selling off because of fears of recession or or because of inflation or fears of inflation? You know, I think there's it's always a fear of some kind. The fear is that inflation either will get worse or or it won't get better, and I think that is what's fueling the recession fears. Because if that's the case, if inflation doesn't get better or if it gets worse, then the Fed will have to be even more aggressive in tightening financial conditions, which will almost a, uh, certainly cause a, a recession. There's not too much debate about that. But what's interesting is there's a really great graphic that came out yesterday we saw and we passed it around and we're going we're gonna to show that um, from Bespoke, which basically shows mathematically that if the current trend for the month over month inflation readings is to persist, meaning if the, inf the rate of inflation has topped um, and, and we have flat readings, relatively flat readings for the next six or seven months, then year over year inflation, which is what the Fed is looking at, 
will be such that it has come back down to the Fed's target, meaning the the year-over-year -year inflation come March or April of next year will be lower than the projected Fed funds rate at that time, meaning the Fed will have met its objective. So that's the the good news or the, or the thing that we can point to that that really could provide a reason for optimism, meaning that uh, there, there, there's, there's still inflation year over year at this point, but those numbers, the older readings are going to start dropping off, which is going to mean that inflation year over year will have actually subsided. It, there will be tangible proof that, um, that inflation has, has peaked, has, has come back down, uh, meaning prices have, have truly stabilized. And I think that is what market participants want to see. It's what the Fed wants to see. And uh, we are still projected to get a few more hikes from the, from the Federal Reserve, which the market has fully digested all of this because you can see in there, there's something called the Fed Funds Futures Market, which bets on whether or not the Fed is is going to move again in the future. And it's uh, there's a hundred percent certainty that they're going to do a 75 basis point hike next week. Hopefully, we've got this video out by then. Odds are low, but um, I, I just I continue to think that. There's been so much negativity and fear and uncertainty priced into this market that um, stocks have been remarkably resilient. And I think that gives should give reason for optimism. That's true. The, the, the data, the, uh, the, the data as it pertains to corporations and profits, uh, S&P 500 profits, for instance, or earnings, is definitely worse than it was in June. So the sell-off leading up into June, I, I do think, was more um, related to fears of, of the Fed and inflation. And it, was, it had not yet translated to actual fears of corporate earnings. And I do think that's, that's the case. It's taken hold now. Um, people are analysts are taking their their estimates down for s p earnings pretty uh significantly so and that's only taken a few months the question is have they brought them down enough are are, are we now projecting such low numbers that uh, corporations have the opportunity to to meet and beat as they say and and i think that's possible i mean that's it's too early to say and that's just conjecture but um I think that, that there's sort of this place where those two things meet, where the, the expectations for earnings and also what the, the Fed funds rate is. Those two things are the, mo the two most important variables. So if corporate earnings have, if estimates have come down enough and we can get some certainty on where the Fed funds rate is going to top out, then I think people will get more comfortable with what multiple they're going to put on those earnings. Right now, they're, they're saying like, 15 or, or 16 times earnings is what they're uh, projecting is a reasonable estimate based on what's happening in the economy. Obviously, it was much higher than that a few years ago. And it was much higher, I think, because there was no question about whether we were in a recession and also interest rates were lower. So there's, there's definitely a lot more moving parts right now. But uh, I just continue to, to see that stocks there were volatile, but we're just not we're not falling apart. You know, we had a bad day a couple of days ago, but I think that was more about positioning going into the CPI number than, than anything else. I think that it was just people were were um, positioned for uh, for a negative inflation reading. They were hopeful that that was going to indicate that the Fed could, you know, stop hiking immediately. There was just a little bit too much optimism going into that one number, and and we saw things could just kind of flip. Um, you know, a week's worth of gains were reversed in a day. And that's kind of all that happened. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm eternally optimistic, but, um, you know, sometimes it's just, it's harder in the short term to, to be that way. But, um, you know, that's, I think stocks and bonds are, are going to continue to be volatile, but I think we finished the year higher than where we are now. And I think we said the same thing in mid-June. And it feels worse now, but we're not actually in in a worse spot. The, the short answer is yes. I, I think that bonds relative to themselves over the last five or 10 years do represent an attractive buying opportunity. It's not like 
uh, it, it's not exciting. There's nothing really exciting to me about bonds, but I think they they now be- belong in every portfolio. Even I don't want to say like uh, you know a, a young person's portfolio, but I, I think it, it represents an opportunity to make money. It's it's at the very least a placeholder where there's minimal downside and you're getting a somewhat decent rate of return via the coupon. Uh, we're getting questions about people that want to put money six month CDs, very, very short term cash alternatives because the rates are now, you know, they're not zero, they're a couple percent, two and a half, three percent. That's, you know, it's it, again, it's not exciting, but it's something. And uh, on the other side of that same coin, I do sort of see that as a sentiment indicator. The fact that people are interested in these short term cash alternatives and they can get themselves excited about 3%, to me that raises my eyebrows a little bit about what is the sentiment of the retail investor and what does that mean for the likelihood of um, opportunity in stocks, you know, a, a more uh, long-term uh, allocation. I think there's, and, and to me it means that we're probably a, probably a good opportunity to be buying stocks. Um, if people are are so scared that they're excited about 3% over the next six months. 3% multiplied by 2 is 6%. That's lower than the historical average return in stocks. So if that's exciting, then um, that just tells you something. So I do think that, that bonds deserve a place in a portfolio. Uh, there's opportunities all across the spectrum, whether it's municipal bonds, high-yield bonds, high-quality corporate bonds, even treasuries, there is an opportunity to park some money and earn a return. That has not really been the case for the better part of the last five years. So things have definitely changed. And uh, what's interesting is as we've seen the Fed funds rate, which is the rate that the Fed controls, short end of the curve, has gone up meaningfully meaningfully this year, um, the longer term, uh, the longer part of the curve, the 10 and 30 year treasuries, uh, they're higher than they were in the start of the year for sure, but they're kind of topped out at about three and a half percent. What could go right to me? We've we've touched on elements of what could go right in the answer to each question so far, but what could go right to me is is now there are a lot of things that that I'm able to point to. You're not hearing too much about it because. You know, people are scared and asset values have declined and that makes people inherently scared or nervous. But the things that could go right, one, we could get a resolution in Russia and Ukraine. And we're starting to see some positive developments. Ukraine is retaking some land and and there's some conciliatory messaging coming, I think, from from Russia, in my opinion. Uh, who knows? That, that could be wrong. Um, we don't know for, with certainty about the quality of the reporting that we're getting, but that would be a, a, a huge thing for, for inflation and, and also just general sentiment. Um, also, the inflation numbers could continue to come in um, flat or down slightly month over month, which again would give some confidence that, that inflation has in fact peaked. The highest reading we got was in June, and so if six to nine months after that highest reading, we are con- you know, continuing to come down. That will be a, a, a good sign for markets and for CEOs, people who make plans on what's gonna happen with pricing. And, and also just uh, the price of stocks and interest rates. If, if we get more of the same, which is the fact that stocks have not broken lower and interest rates have not broken higher, if, if that continues, that can actually uh, just provide some stability and, and confidence. Um, and we could just see a recovery like we saw after mid-June. Stocks started to rally. And all of a sudden, headlines sort of softened up a little bit. And it was like, oh, you know, has inflation peaked? And are things, is the worst behind us? It just, it just would not surprise me again if, if we see some relief from this recent new correction, which took us back down roughly to the June lows. Um, if we just get some some price relief, and then all of a sudden things start to become a little bit a little bit more optimistic as we get into the end of the year, I just wouldn't surprise me.